From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. U.S. Supreme Court eyes narrowing of CFAA. Continuing a story we covered on Monday, the Supreme Court has indicated serious reservations about the ambiguity and scope of the nation's only major cybercrime law, hinting it may narrow the law's applicability to avoid criminalizing such acts as checking social media at work. Justice Neil Gorsuch suggested that the Van Buren case upon which the Supreme Court case was based was the latest example of the government trying to broaden the scope of criminal laws in contestable ways. He stated the DOJ's argument risked, quote, making a federal criminal of us all, end quote. FBI warns of BEC scammers using email auto-forwarding in attacks. An FBI private industry notification coordinated with CISA and released November 25th highlights the abuse of auto-forwarding rules on web-based email clients as part of a business email compromise culture that also includes social engineering, phishing, or hacking to compromise business email accounts with the goal of redirecting future or pending electronic payments. BEC scammers have been known to use email rules added to the target's own web-based email clients to hide their activity while impersonating employees or business partners. Trump lawyer calls for Christopher Krebs' execution. Joe DiGenova, a lawyer working on Mr. Trump's election campaign, was quoted on Monday as saying former DHS cybersecurity official Chris Krebs should be executed. Mr. Krebs was fired from the Trump administration in mid-November after releasing a statement that the 2020 election had been the most secure in American history. Mr. DiGenova stated on a radio interview that Mr. Krebs was a, quote, class A moron, he should be drawn and quartered, taken out at dawn and shot, end quote. Mr. DiGenova is active in the Trump campaign's current strategy of planning to dispute the election at the Supreme Court level. Report suggests cybersecurity field needs to grow 89% to meet security requirements. Around 3.1 million professionals are needed to bridge the cybersecurity talent gap, according to a report published by the International Information System Security Certification Consortium, also known as ISC Squared. The report goes on to say that excessive requirements for years of experience and professional certifications, plus inflated expectations for junior roles, are the problem rather than a lack of workers. ISC Squared, as well as other cybersecurity organizations, suggest greater focus should be placed on hiring people from diverse, non-traditional backgrounds with ongoing training, replacing high barriers to entry. And now a word from our sponsor, Secure Layer 7. Spending on the security of your organization's system more than you should? What you need is a cybersecurity solution, one within your budget and on a time limit. Why look anywhere else when Secure Layer 7 is the security partner of choice for today's industry leader? Get in touch with Secure Layer 7 to get the best of cybersecurity service. Visit Secure Layer 7, that's Secure Layer Number 7.net. Dozens of dormant North American networks resurrect simultaneously. Spam House, the Geneva-based international non-profit organization focused on cyber threats, has revealed that last week, 52 dormant networks came back to life at the same time, which is essentially unheard of. Trace routes and pings indicated that they were all physically hosted in the New York City area, but Spam House also notes that the border gateway protocol paths that connect these networks to their hosting facilities involved Ukrainian companies. Biohacking can dupe DNA scientists into creating dangerous viruses and toxins. Academics from the Ben-Gurion University of the Negev have described in a report how biologists and scientists could become victims of cyber attacks designed to create new viruses using malware that can replace substrings in DNA sequencing, circumventing current safety protocols. This attack scenario underscores the need to harden the synthetic DNA supply chain with protections against cyber biological threats. One of the report's authors, Rami Putsis, states, adding, To address these threats, we propose an improved screening algorithm that takes into account in vivo gene editing. Brazilian plane company Ombrer targeted in cyber attack. 
The world's third largest commercial jets maker and manufacturer of commercial, executive, military and agricultural aircraft said its IT systems were breached recently as part of an attack that was detected on November 25th. The company shared few details about the incident, claiming that files on only a single environment became inaccessible due to the attack. Ombrayer said it quickly initiated its incident response procedures, which caused temporary disruptions to some operations due to the need to isolate some systems. The growing popularity of Microsoft Edge comes with fraudulent extensions. Microsoft has removed 18 Edge browser extensions from the Edge add-ons portal after the extensions were caught injecting ads into users' web search results pages. A subsequent investigation found multiple abusive extensions that had been uploaded on Microsoft's new fledgling Edge add-ons portal, either as extensions that tried to pass off as the official versions of various apps, even if those apps didn't have official versions for Edge, or as extensions that were copied from authentic Chrome extensions ported to Edge and then had malicious code inserted. Over on CISOseries.com, we've got a six-minute highlights reel of the best moments from our last CISO series video chat entitled Hacking Data Protection and Visibility, where we discussed how to control your data when it's no longer in your network. Please join us again this Friday for our video chat entitled Hacking User Access. This should be a really good discussion because, as you know, there are many dimensions to user access. Please join us at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and stick around for the cybersecurity speed dating session that starts one hour later. Just head to CISOseries.com and click the Register for Video Chats button. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 